Hello everybody and welcome back to the second half commentary of Gosport versus Hayes and Yedin. I want you through both sets of teams as Gosport they're just coming out of the tunnel now and we're just waiting for Hayes and Yedin. So it just gives me a bit of time to run you through both sets of teams. But I'll start with your away team today, which sees Hayes and Yedin with their goalkeeper Dylan Adai starting in goal, two Cole Brown, four Oddi Lucy, five Mark Marvel Ag Peter, nine Mohamed Betimer. 10 Luke Gambon, 11 Max Hudson, 12 Samuel Fanion, 14 Paul Field, 15 William Salmon, and 17 Amos Nashua Jr. And your Gosport lineup today sees number one Toby Stewart starting goal, two Harry Kavanagh, your skipper, number three Roy Williams, 14 Jake Cope, 16 Zach Sharp, 6 Charlie Vazma, 7 Bradley Tarbuck, 19 Danny Holland, 9 Dan Wooden, 10 Antonio Diaz, and 18 Rafa Ramos. So they're both sets of teams for you today. And it looks as though there's not going to be any substitutions at half time. We were originally looking at the Hayes and Yedin captain, see whether he would be coming off or not. But it looks as though he's still on the pitch as well. So I think both teams, they're not, there's not going to be any substitutions for either teams. And it will be Gosport kicking off in this half. It's going to be Gosport and Yellow shooting from my left to right and vice versa for Hayes and Yedin. But we didn't really see too much action within the first half, so yes. we'll be hoping for a much more entertaining first, well, second half. <laughs> But no, Jeremy, we're just about to kick off in the second half. And I was saying to the viewers, it wasn't an action-packed half, was it, in the well, first half? So, but what can we expect in the second half from what we've learned from the first half? I think Gosport will just need to be ready for the positivity that Hayes... Because Hayes now, they're going to hear that Harrow 2 nil up at Salisbury. That's good news for us, but that's bad news for them. Mm. So they're now going to want to really put the hammer down. Because if they can win today and Harrow... Because, yeah, they need to match what Harrow are doing. So, yeah, I think the results elsewhere are going to shape the game here as well and how the teams approach it. So, uh, certainly, I'd like to see Gosport be a bit more positive this half. Well, it's well kicked off here and we are live. Like I said, it is Gosport nil, Hayes and Yedin nil. So both teams looking for that goal. Hayes and Yedin need a goal to try and avoid their relegation scrap. And Gosport, well, a goal today would be so important. Hey, AFC Totten losing, Salisbury losing. A win today would take us to second place with just two games left to play. Right, well, that's assuming that it finishes that way at the other games. Uh, that would be brilliant for us, but we need to win this one. Well, currently Gosport are on the attack. Brad, Bradley Tarbot passing it into Danny Hollins. Hollins chipping the ball into Zach Sharp. Sharp through on goal. The flag goes up regardless. But what a save that was from the Hayes and Yedin keeper regardless. He didn't know that. And Adai just stretching, getting down low to make that initial save. And it was a good save. It was because he had to see the flag go up. So he had to make the save. And to be fair, I think Zach Sharp probably got a bit of a nosebleed there. It's <laughs> through one on one. But... Hey, look, it's an opportunity and it's just a shame that the flag ended it, but mm. he was about five yards off. Yeah. <laughs> Well, still, I would say, despite that being offside, that was still one of Gosport's better attacks, probably yeah, of the whole well, game. Hey, <laughs> that's how you want to start the second half, isn't it? Mm. You know, split their defence open within a minute for starting the second <laughs> half. Yeah, it's, it's a great start. Let's see where it goes from here. So you are tweeting, are you? Yeah. Not? Right, well, then it's over to me for a minute or so while you do it. Uh, throw into Gosport on this near side, Harry Kavanagh to take. He's going to... It is Ramos, who will just try and bring the ball down. But three Hayes and players got around him and just made sure he had no room with which to work. Gosport just launched the ball up towards the centre circle. Have it back, says uh, Ekpateta of Hayes. It's a sort of from me to you 
and uh, Goscourt now building from the back. Rory Williams on the left. He crosses the halfway line, looks up once, looks up twice, and then goes diagonally out to the right-hand side towards Kavanagh. Hayes just scampering over to try and make sure Kavanagh has no room to work. So Cav beats one, just tries to beat the second, feeds it in towards Tarbuck. Ball runs all the way through to the keeper, Dylan Adai. It was another half half opportunity for Gosport to do something there within two and a half minutes of the second half starting, really. It is nil-nil here. As we've alluded to, both Gosport's rivals in the playoffs are losing at this point. So Gosport should, should know this and they should be thinking we need a goal and urgently. Well, it's Hudson in the left-hand channel, and like I said, it's going to be a massive second half, and we're trying to keep you updated with the Pompey score as we go along as well. Last time we did check it, was Pompey 1, Bolton 1. Today could seal Pompey's promotion, and it's going to be a massive game for them. And it's probably a reason why we've seen such a big attendance today, with Pompey not playing at home. And as a result, we've seen quite a few people at the AI Stadium today. Yeah, haven't quite much. Managed to break the thousand barrier today, James. The attendance is 935, 935. Still very impressive, though, yeah, for yeah, definitely a team yeah, of this yeah, level. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we're up around that level for attendances now, and let's see what Rafa Ramos can do with this. Right, so Rafa Ramos coming forward, yeah. trying to thread oh, Dan Wooden through on goal. Mm -hmm. Just unlucky there, as it was cold, the last man back for Hayes and Yedden, and good defending there. And that's really been the story of the first half. Hayes and Yedden, they've looked very solid defensively. And unfortunately, Antonius Diaz, he did there just step on Oddie Lucy's foot. It was a captain. He's already gone down three times this afternoon. Make that four. He has got up quickly this time, but he's already come off the pitch two times. <laughs> and you got to feel for their captain today. Yeah, he's certainly been through it, hasn't he? Um, fair play to him. Bit of a soldier and he's just he's just carrying on. But uh, yeah, I think... What, on the gospel side? The it looks so like gospel might be making a change, James. Um, Paul, who works with us in the press box, has spotted a lot of activity in the board downstairs. So let's see what comes of that. Uh, it's going to be... Alex Barca coming on. Yeah. And I would imagine that will be Alex Barca coming on for Jake Cope. Jake Cope, he's been occupying this left mid position for the first half. Uh, I didn't think he looked that bad going forward. So maybe a bit of a shock. But, well, it will be a corner first for Hayes and Yedden. Uh, and let's just see what Hayes and Yedden make of this corner. It's going to be Hudson, the man taking this corner. And it's hit in right towards the far post. It's been tipped out by Toby Stewart, but still in Hayes and Yedden position with their number 17, passing it back into... Cole. Cole launches one up in Lindy and he finds the bottom right corner. Who got it? It's Captain Marvellous from Audi Lucy. They're number four. It was a brilliant cross there from Brown and, well, quite easily finding the Audi Lucy unmarked in the centre of the park. And it is a goal for Hazen Yedden on the 55th minute. Oh. But yeah. At the same time, it's going to be Zach Sharp coming off. Well, that was an awfully defended cross there. Gosport, a lot of their players have suddenly put their heads down following the goal. But Oddi Lucy, Captain Marvellous there in the middle of the box, totally unmarked, and it was more or less a free goal for them, Jeremy, there. Yeah, it wasn't the best. And um, it just shows you. I mean, Hayes have been, they've come here with a positive frame of mind. They've not been afraid to attack Gosport Borough. And I've got to say, James, they deserve that. Mm. They deserve that. And fair play to them. What that does do, though, is it throws the challenge down to Gosport. Now you've got to come at us. Now you've got to try and turn this around. With Gosport's uh, playoff rivals also losing, you're now in a position where all three confirmed playoff teams are behind. It's a strange mm, yeah. situation to be in. Now, while you're tweeting, I'm going to just talk the listeners through this. Hayes immediately having to defend the Gosport Borough attack after the restart. Wasma there. Little bit of a def uh, defensive header cleared. Now, Kavanagh, he sort of penned in to not a lot of room, actually. Hayes just closing Gosport down. Every time there's a Gosport Borough player in possession, normally, normally I say, you have two red shirts coming. That's a long ball through, and that's Cope on the left hand side. And that was a little dink crossing towards Wood, and the keeper came out quickly, quickly, quickly to shut that down. But that was a real chance there for Gosport to reply immediately here. And that is the sort of response you need when you go behind at home like this. And uh, 
I, I think Wooden was one player charging in there. Didn't see who the other one was, but Cope, good work on the left hand side of the penalty area. James. Well, it looks as though the formation has totally shifted now. Alex Barca replacing Zach Sharp, obviously. And now Zach Sharp, he's occupied, well, not Zach Sharp. Well, Alex Barca, he's turned into more camera, and it looks as though we're playing three at a back rather than four now. Yeah, well, to be fair, what it hasn't been working, has it? And Hayes have, prefer, have posed a tactical problem there for the gospel management. And they've now started to try mm. and solve the riddle. Well, it was a substitution which really needed to come. Now, Bradley Tarbuck, 15 yards up from goal, tries to get past Hudson, but he is dispossessed oh. by the Hazen Yedden midfielder. Now, Hazen Yedden trying to look to work another attack, but it's been dispossessed by Danny Hollins, 15 yards away from the Hazen Yedden goal. Passes it out wide into Alex Barca. Now, Barca coming forward as he passes a short pass into Bradley Tarbuck. Tarbuck has multiple options in front of him, but passes it back to the Czech forward. Back to Tarbuck. Multiple one-twos between the one... Well, midfield is there. Now, Rory Williams coming down this left-hand channel, trying to chip a ball into Diaz. And Diaz tries to float one back into Williams. And Diaz immediately winning the ball back, following being dispossessed. And he tees one up for Rafa Ramos. Rafa goes for goal. It's a brilliant initial save from Adi. And, well, it was Widen there, just unlucky not to follow it up. And as a result, Adi has to grapple the ball, make sure the veteran can get on top of it. Injured himself involving getting the ball. Yeah. That was a fantastic bit of goalkeeping oh. from Adi, just making sure the veteran can get on top of it. The, and it was a good initial save from Rafa. Wooden was right there. And that's brave goalkeeping, to be fair. I would put money on Wooden scoring mm. any day of the week in that situation. That goalkeeper oh, deserves all the credit. Now, what's going on? Oh, Why, are Why are Hazel agitated? Why are Hayes agitated? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> And there has been a yellow card plot towards the goal scorer, I want to say, Odie Lucy. And it's all started to kick off near the referee. Except for Teta, who's been booked. Well, what is, I don't get. What is that all about? Yeah, I, I really don't know. I don't know what's, what's got their backs up. I really don't. The um, only thing I could think of, maybe one of them said something to the referee. He doesn't like it. But what was there to say to the referee? Maybe they weren't happy with the challenge that went in on the goalkeeper, perhaps, but I don't see what else it could be. No, I can't. But anyway, play has resumed as Charlie Fasme. He does head a one back to Toby Stewart. And just an unfamiliar moment we've seen just in the last couple of minutes. It is Hazen Yedden 1, Gosport 0, and maybe Hazen Yedden might be able to get another as Hudson coming forward, passes it into oh, Betimer, and Betimer no. is brought down just outside of the edge of the box. That wasn't good. That Not was at all. behind two-footed. Now, what, what's the, what is the referee going to make of this? Well, it's that man, Betimer, once again causing the problems. Betimer and Gammon coming forward, forming that dynamic duo. Betimer, the latter, being brought down just outside of the box. And as a result, Hayes and Yedden, they've got a free kick in such a deadly position. They've already had one free kick on the other end of the pitch, where they did just narrowly miss that top right corner. And what can they do from here, Jeremy? Well, I think we know from the free kick in the first half taken by uh, Betimer, he nearly graced the top of the crossbar. Now, I'm amazed that uh, Tarbuck hasn't been booked for that because that was from behind two-footed lunch. Yeah, I'm, so I'm amazed yeah. he wasn't booked for it, frankly. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, but let's see what Betterman can do with this. It's dangerous. Well, he is the man initially lining up the free kick. Betterman, he's already come close, just narrowly skimming the crossbar. But what can he do here? The Hazen Yedden, number nine, tees up the free kick, goes under the wall, and it's a good stop from Toby Stewart. And the follow-up is seen Nasher. He tries to get on the end of it, Nasher. Toby Stewart immediately gets up, gets to his bottom left corner to get the follow-up save. And that's a brilliant double save from the young Pompey Loney. Toby Stewart currently keeping us in this game. Hasn't he just? What a double save that was. That free kick again had venom, it had swerve, it was all over the place. And not once, but twice. He makes brilliant saves. What what credit to him. Well, as a result, Hayes and Yedden do have a corner, so the danger is not totally adverted. It's going to be Brown taking the corner. It's a deep one, and it floats over everyone, other than Hudson, who goes for a shot, and it's Hayes and Yedden, second of the night. It came from the danger zone in the box, and like I said, the danger wasn't totally averted. The ball just could not be cleared from that penalty zone. We're currently unsure if in the press box, and it looks as though Hayes and Yedden could be the team taking the three points. Gosport immediately looking to make that initial change. It's going to be Christine Campbell take, well coming on. But that is just atrocious defending once again from Gosport. 
It was a corner lifted in from Brown, just hit towards that back post. It looked as though Nashua was the man who got that final touch, but we are just awaiting confirmation here. And Jeremy, you well, once again, it's poor defending from the Gosport defence from corners and set pieces once again causing the most damage. Yeah, Gosport deserved nothing less, I'm afraid. Um, and now they've got it all to do. Well, I think that was, I think that was. Right, okay. Have we made the change? Have we made a change? I don't know. Hey, hey, number right, I'm number 12. So we can now confirm the goal scorer was Samuel yeah, Fanian. No, we have yeah, thank you. Yeah, Samuel Fania. Yeah. So, yeah, that massive shame for Gospel. And we are currently coming back forward. Alex Barca leading the line, trying to play a ball into Kavanaugh. And Gosport, if they're going to have to get even a point or even trying to look for that three points, we've been put in a detrimental position now. And it just it looks ever more likely that we won't be getting the three points. And we're missing out on a huge opportunity today. Yeah, it's not good. Who got the first one? Um, I think it was, yeah, oh, yeah Oddie. I'm a bit remiss with my note keeping today. Um, yeah, we haven't changed yet, have we? We've got Gospel trying to make a change, but yeah, now they have got it all to do, James. They are up against it, and you're tweeting, so I'll carry on. Yeah, Hayes, tails up, 2 nil up, Gospel in all sorts of trouble now, and they need to find answers and they need to find them quickly. The only bit of good news is there's plenty of time left for them to find those answers. Um, but Hayes deserved the lead, mm. deserved to be 2-0 up. And Gosport now trying to build from the back. Charlie Wasmo in a bit of space, but nowhere really for him to go. So he just exchanges passes there with Harry Kavner. Wasmo now got, trying to go out to the left. And uh, who's out there now? That, is that Danny Hollands? Yes, Hollands looking up, seeing what options are on the table. Cope on the left hand side under the Harry Misson stand. Yes. Gosport holding on to the ball with Diaz, Barca, and Gosport moving from right to left. That's oh, almost, really almost that. a really good, precise dive and a ball into the path of Tarba, but it's torn all the way up for a goal kick. Well, hopefully, that second goal it might just add a bit of momentum to Gosport. We know how big momentum is within football. And is well, we can now confirm the sub will be happening. It's going to be Christian Campbell coming on, but the question is, who will we be coming on for? For me, oh, the double, substitution... Double oh, it's going to be a double, double change. change. Double change. The yeah. other man coming on is Alfie Stanley. He did get that very late goal against Tiverton. And can he get another late goal today? So it's going to be Charlie Fosmer coming off for Christian Campbell. And the other man coming off is going to be Antonio Diaz coming on for Alfie Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, Gosport Borough making a double substitution. Coming on, number 11, Alfie Stanley. Number 15, Christian Campbell. Replacing number six, Charlie Wasma, and number 10, Antonio Diaz. Two big substitutions there, both attackers. Alfie Stanley got that late, late goal against Tiverton. And could he get another late goal today? Yeah, it was, uh, they needed they needed to do something. They've had to do something. Uh, Hayes in a commanding lead now, and deservedly so. And Gosport, after the euphoria of the week where they booked their playoff spot, not playing well at all today. I, I've now sort of quite confidently say that they're not playing well at all and um they've got about half an hour left to try and do something about it and here down the left hand side they are trying to sort of find a way through they have got a throw while you're tweeting and uh, this is going to be cope with the throw level with the edge of the penalty area james and uh, he's given it up actually and campbell i think it is yeah, who's yeah, going to take the throw gosport just trying to pick that lock now Campbell trying to find some space for a cross. Doesn't find it. Back to Barca and back to you. <laughs> and it trickles this way back to Barca. And he tries to play across. And once again, that's been the story of Gosport's pass in this game. Too hard hit and not enough final product on any of the passes. And it is 2-0 here at the AI Stadium. And unfortunately, it's not 2-0 to Gosport. Instead, it's 2-0 to Hayes and Yedden. And while it, currently AD is taking the goal kick, I will run you through some of the other results. Let's just hope uh, any of the other teams aren't leading. Yeah, so losing, right? it is Walton and Hersham nil, Sholin nil, Tiverton Town nil, Chesham nil, Salisbury nil, Harrowborough two, which is great for Gosport. Pool Town three, Beaconsfield nil. So that keeps them out of relegation. Hendon one, Murphy Town nil. Hungerford one, ASC Totten nil. Hazen Yedden two, Gosport nil. Dorchester one, Hanwell one. Didcot two, Plymouth two. Bracknell Town 3, Winchester 1, and Swindon Supermarine 3, Basin Stoke 0 in the early kickoff. So all the results are luckily going our way, but 
Yeah. We're not doing anything about it. Yeah. And and Merthyr um, looking good for the playoffs. Uh, sorry, no. Um, Bracknell looking good for the playoffs mm. with that set of uh, equation of results. Yeah. But we do because we're two 0 down now. If we do end up losing this game, then we need to hope they both lose as well. Well, it's Hayes and Yedin with a free kick, twenty yards up from goal. It's going to be Brown, the assist maker, taking the corner once again, trying to hit. I think it was Betamina at the back post, but Stewart comes out to collect her and he launches one forward, trying to find Alfie Stanley, but instead finds the head of Moore Zill and Gosport. They're going to have to come on the attack once again. Jake Cope back to Christine Campbell. And Campbell and Cope forming that dynamic duo we've seen numerous times this season. The two new signings, Jake Cope. He's got options in front of him, but chooses to pass it back into Danny Hollins. Back into... Alex Barca, Barca across the floor into Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh coming down this right-hand channel. He's got options beside him and he will choose that option in Bradley Tarbuck. Tarbuck into Barca just outside of the D. Barca oh. lining up a shot and he drags one just wide at the bottom right corner. And that's the closest gospel have come in this second half. Said the words out of my mouth. That is the closest they've come. And... Yeah, to be fair, let's not panic just yet. They've got time to do some work. And, of course, it was the corresponding fixture last season that Gosport were 2-0 down and turned it around in the last five minutes to win 3-2. Um, it can happen. And it's got to happen, really, if Gosport want to sort of to cement their place in the playoffs now. They've got to do it. Yeah, definitely. Well, that was the closest score spot I've come with that Alex Barca chance. And he is on the ball once again, passing it into Bradley Tarbuck. Tarbuck back into Rory Williams inside his own half. Looks as though he's going to be passing it across into Jake Cope, but instead goes around the opposite flank into Bradley Tarbuck, just by the right-hand corner flag, trying to escape Max Hudson. And he does get past Max Hudson, thanks to the overlap with Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh with a ball, and it finds Bradley Tarbuck once again. Tarbuck trying to deliver a ball, and it finds... Dan Wooden, and it's been finished yeah! by Rafa Ramos. Goal for Gospel on the 65th minute. And it's the Portuguese. Rafa Ramos, Rafa Ramos with a goal. It was a striker duo once again forming the goal. And it led to so the final man who pushed the ball over the line was Rafa Ramos in the 65th minute. And just like that, Gospel have clawed back a goal late on. We still got half an hour left in this tie. And can Gospel find a goal to get us back onto equal terms? And can we even find that third goal to get us a win? But ever likely, that is a massive goal for Gospel. It looks as though the touchline, I'm pretty sure they just said it was wooden. But just like that, we're back on, e well, not equal terms. One goal away from equal terms. Oh, we can confirm it was Dan Wooden with a goal. Ladies and gentlemen, goal for Gosport scored in the 64th minute. The score at number nine, Dan Wooden. Well, Jeremy, I suppose the question is. <laughs> well, as you just heard there, there was a bit of a debate there in the press box and down in the dugout whether who was trying to get the goal. It did look as though Rafa, it was definitely Rafa, did, he did have a final output involving the goal. But we can now confirm it was Dan Wooden who got that final touch. Dan Wooden trying to flick a ball back into his striker counterpart. And now suddenly the momentum, it has changed. It's Bradley Tarbuck this time coming forward. Can he find his goal? He's already got 14 goals this season. Now Harry Kavanagh just outside of the box towards the right side. Passing it into Alex Barca. Barca into Danny Hollins. Hollins. He's going to pass it out wide into Christine Campbell. Every gospel player currently forward. Campbell delivering the ball, finding Dan Wooden, and he lifts one into Rafa Ramos, but it's well defended there from... It looked as though it was Brown who got the final ball, just smashing one out, but only as far as Harry Kavanagh. Currently inside his own half. Kavanagh switching the ball into Bradley Tarbuck, just inside the Hayes and Yedden ball. And Bradley puts the ball inside the face of the goal. It finds Rafa Ramos. Rafa Ramos gets the final touch, slicing one towards the bottom left corner. Adai gets a lovely save once again, and in the process, he injures himself. Adai, the man keeping Hayes and Yedin from not well going back. I tell you what, that's brave goalkeeping. That hits him in the face. But it doesn't matter if you keep you keep it out, you kept it out. Got sport with a corner, but that was nailed on to all. Well, we are now 2-1 here at the AI okay. Stadium. Okay, so you want me to yeah, do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, corner yeah. from the left-hand side. Campbell. 
And there's sort of one, two, three, four, five in the box here. Here it comes. It's an outswinger to Tarbuck, just trying to sort of keep the ball in Gospel's possession. Joe Pope, Tarbuck now on the right-hand side, having a look, plays it inside. Alex Barca, is he going to shape to shoot? No, Campbell on the other side of the penalty area. Gospel keeping the pressure up now. Campbell having a look, feigns to shoot. Brought down maybe. Um, but Ramos in with a chance here. They tried from a difficult angle. The keeper was ready for that. But Gospel really turning the screw on Hayes and Yedding now. And... Gosport 1, Hayes 2, and we have played 22 minutes of the second half. Gosport going 2-0 down, but it's taken that to wake them up, <laughs> and now they're playing. But why why do it the hard way? That's what I would suggest to you listeners. So, you know, Gosport playing the ball out from the back. Williams, square, bit too long, miss hit. That's horribly, horribly hit out of play. James. And then it was Tarbot there, just launch one over, trying to keep it in play. And as a result, Hayes and Yedin, they do get a throw in. But for me, suddenly, it's like a pendulum. It's just totally shifted now into Gosport's favour. Now we have got that goal. Can we get another? Can we even look for that third goal? Well, they've got literally 23 minutes to do it. Mm. Um, two ones, not insurmountable. And Hayes just trying to slow the game now. down now, James. Well, could it be the same story of that Tiverton game? We were losing up until that 80th minute. Goals from Stanley and Wooden did get us the three points. But it's Betamina currently just outside of the box towards that left-hand corner flag, passing it into Hudson. Hudson, with lovely trickery, passes it across the floor and it's intercepted by Harry Kavanagh. So he clears one forward into Dan Wooden. Dan Wooden with a layoff into Alfie Stanley, the substitute. Stanley lifts the ball forward into Portuguese. Rafa Ramos. Rafa Ramos coming down this left-hand pocket. He's got options now arriving in front of him. Rafa Ramos just by the left corner flag, trying to dance his way inside the Hazen Yedin box before eventually dishing a shot which goes wide at the top left corner and then the and it's a wasted corn well wasted chance for Gosport. Yeah, it was. Um disappointing really because you had options arriving in the middle and I think he went for goal, went for the spectacular and he only succeeded in launching it over the bus. Um and that's a real bus for people that don't mm. know Gosport Borough. There's a real <laughs> yeah. bus cleared it. So yeah. Well, I found it interesting in our last away game, they had a bus as well. Hanwell. Yeah, Hanwell, that's it, yeah. So, so we're yeah, no, no. <laughs> The only, yeah, I was about to say, the only difference is the colour. They've got a red, rather. Oh, I'm well, going to have to cut myself off. Fanias has delivered a ball. It's a good first touch from the goal scorer, but it's been cut out by Harry Kavanaugh, who launches one out, and it's going to fall back to Christian Campbell, the substitute. He's got bags of energy. He normally has energy, but he's only going to have more energy after coming on late in this game. Christian Campbell currently coming forward. Passes one out wide into Jake Campbell, just 20 yards out from goal. Campbell back into Hollands. Hollands might be teeing up a shot, but instead passes it out wide into Kavanaugh in the right-hand pocket. He's got Tarbuck arriving on the overlap, but Kavanaugh tries to unleash a cross. It's going to trickle its way back into Rory Williams, thanks to a deflection from the other Williams in the Hayes and Yedden team. Now Tarbuck delivering the cross, and it's been well dealt with by Moore's Cecil, who clears one forward. Now Harry Kavanaugh wins it back for Gosport, coming down just by the Gosport dugouts, back into Bradley Tarbuck, Tarbuck pass one into Stanley, back out wide into Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, he's got options and he chooses to pass it into Tarbuck just outside of the box, but Captain Audi Lucy, the goal scorer, immediately wins it back, and now Hazen Yedden might be able to break here with a counter-attack, but it's brilliant defending from Harry Kavanaugh as he immediately wins one back, oh! but sliding Audi Lucy sees the ball one back, as a result, Harry Kavanaugh, he goes straight down to floor, and rather than Audi Lucy being the man injured, instead he is the man injuring as he injures Harry Kavanagh. He's currently on the floor. He has gotten up, but that was a reckless challenge from their captain. And as a result, he does see yellow and Gospel get a free kick just outside of the box. Well, he's done what Williams and Sharp did. It's called the tactical foul and taking one from the team. What it has done is it's given Gosport an interesting uh, position to exploit the set piece. Um, and it's a chance for them to pl apply some pressure here. And maybe, just maybe, Get back into it. Gosport 1, Hayes and Yedden 2. You're listening to Gosport Radio. Gosport currently have a free kick just outside of the box. It's going to be a three-man wall in front of Tarbuck's free kick. It's just an option, Jeremy, where you can have a go at a free kick or would you say or recommend difficult for him angle, to pass difficult it? Difficult angle here, James. He's going to want to put a, just a perfect delivery, maybe on the head of Wooden, Ramos, if he makes a run. Let's see. Tarbuck with the ball. He's going to go for a shot, tries to curl one round the wall and narrowly just gets a flick from Gambin. And as a result, 
Gambin sends Fanny Ann running through on goal. And that's good last man defending from Captain Rory Williams. Now Williams starting to come forward as he passes it back from Kavanaugh. And Jeremy, it was a wasted opportunity from that free kick there. I'm surprised he went for goal. It was it had a very minimal chance of uh, succeeding from that angle and that distance. It would have been better to try and knock it on the head of somebody there. But uh, but then when Hazen Yedding tried to catch Gosport on the break, astute defending from Rory, really well reacted. Mm, definitely. And now Gosport, they're still on the attack. Harry Kavanagh coming forward. He's got Stanley in front of him. But unfortunately, Stanley is smart, so he has to pass it back into Alex Barca. And Barca does lose the ball. And now it's Betamina coming forward. Betamina coming forward. And also Fanian. Also the goal scorer, Odi Lusu, just on the left side of him. As Betamina skips past Bradley Tarbuck. And now Alfie Stanley trying to win the ball from Gambin. But it's good from Gambin as he passes it back into Brown. Yeah, it's, uh, again, the decision making was questionable. And it led to that whole situation happening there. Gosport, their decision making needs looking at here, but let's see what they can do with this. Uh, it's Bradley Tarbuck playing a free ball into Alfie Stanley, who's arriving outside of the box. Stanley tries to lift the ball into Rafa Ramos, but it's been cut out by Moore Seal. Now Rafa Ramos wins it back. A sliding challenge does see Ig fall all the way back into Christian Campbell, who was initially outside of the central circle, now just outside of the Hayes and Yedens box. Jake Cope delivering the ball, and he doesn't find he doesn't find the initial planned Alex Barca. But Gosport, they don't need to worry yet as it's still in possession as Danny Hellens floats the ball, trying to find Dan Wooden, but it's once again well dealt with by a D. And yeah. a D for me, he's been the man of the match. Definitely, definitely. Um, but also, well, one of three that I would suggest, oh, what's going on? We've got a Hayes player that's literally just gone to the floor. I believe that could be so Fanny Ann, the goal No, not the goal scorer, oh, sorry. Is it him? Uh, maybe not, actually. No, it's not Fanny Ann, sorry. Yeah, it's Fanny Ann. But again, well, this gives me a chance to tell the crowd what the attendance yeah, exactly, is. Exactly, yeah. And as you do that, I will run you through some of the results in the Southern Premier League. Ladies and gentlemen, and it looks as though a lot of games are now arriving at full time. Swindon Supermarine 3, Basingstoke Town 0, Bracknell 3, Winchester 1, Didcot 2, Plymouth Parkway 2, Dorchester 1, Hanwell 1, Steel 2 1 here at the AI Stadium, Hungerford 1, AFC Totten 0, Murphy 0, Hendon 1, Hall Town 3, Beaconsfield 0, Salisbury 0, Harrow 2, Tiverton 0, Chesham 0, and Walton and Hersham 0, Sholin 0. So, once again, all the results are favouring us, but we are currently losing 2 1 to Hayes and Yedden. If we can somehow find that goal and get that crucial point, it's going to elevate our well positioning and maybe just can get that second place spot. But we will be stopping as there will be a substitution made. And it does look as though the substitution will be made for Hayes and Yedden, their third and final change. But who is it going to be? They made one already. Um, yeah, they've made one already, I think. Missed that. Completely missed that. But I think it looks as though it's that Fanny Ann coming off. Uh, well, he hasn't used the ball, does he? That's what I was going to say. There's no indication of the board. It, well, it is definitely Fanny Ann. He has yeah, come off, but I don't think they're making the substitution. So Hayes and Yedden, they're only going to carry on with 10 men. And now Fanny Ann, he's arriving back on the pitch. So just a bit of miscommunication there. It did originally look as though they were making that substitution, but nonetheless, they haven't chosen to do it. Fanny Ann, he has had a good game and he will be continuing. But as I do say that, Gosport, they are on the attack. Christian Campbell passing it back into Dutchy Hollands. Hollands trying to put a ball into Barca. And Barca now immediately exchanging with Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh lifting the ball towards Jake Cope. And just too much power once again on the cross as it floats out for a goal kick. Um, and now I can confirm the goal now. kick. They I was going to say. I think even Pat and right, Joe are a bit confused. Jack Williams. No, why not? So, Betamina off. Betima. And it's going to be number three. So, it's going to be Williams Ladies coming on. And we can now confirm that second substitution is Wabo coming on. Double substitution, in fact. Coming on number three, Jack Williams. And number 20, Norman Wabo. Replacing number nine. Mo 
Well, you, as you just heard there, Hayes and Yedin, they have made two substitutions. And to me, it looks as though they've brought off two attackers and in replacement, they've put on two defenders. Shot shot. Yeah. Well, they've got 15 minutes plus stoppage time to hard to see this one out. Mm. Well, not long left at all. We're currently a goal behind. And as time does go down, the clock does keep ticking. Gosport, they are currently on the attack once again. Time is running out, though, for Gosport. Rafa Ramos, he does receive a ball just outside of the D. Now, Rafa Ramos, he pushes number 15 to the floor. He's claiming there was no foul. But as a result, the referee agrees with Rafa. And the last, I think the last touch, it did come off of Hudson. And Gosport, as a result, they have been given a corner. It's going to be Harry Kavanagh taking this corner. Yeah, OK. Well, I wasn't sure whether he was going to penalise Gosport there. Yeah. He hasn't. Gosport with a corner. Let's see what they can do. That's Harry Kavanagh, the man taking the corner. It's hit right in towards oh, the middle, but it's been punched away by a die. Falling to Tarbuck, who lifts one into the danger zone. Trying to find Harry Kavanagh, but it's been intercepted by Williams as he's brought down to the floor by Harry Kavanagh. Uh, and once again, it's just trying to get the ball in the box that's causing the most problems for Gosport at the moment. Yeah, um, Gosport have got to just find another gear, I think, from somewhere. And the final ball is letting them down. I, I can't stress that strongly enough. Um, but they have about 12 minutes left to try and find the equaliser. Well, it's a dive with the free kick. Launch one forward. Trying to find new substitute, Wabo. And now it's just pinballing around with headers. It's Roy Williams is the last man who controls it as he passes it on to Christine Campbell. Gosport just playing it around in their own half, around 20 yards away from Toby Stewart in goal. Now, Christian Campbell is trying to create a bit of urgency within the team in yellow. Passes it out wide into Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh out wide into Tarbuck. Tarbuck in this right-hand pocket. Passes it into Alfie Stanley, the substitute. Stanley back into Kavanagh. Now, Barca, 20 yards out from goal. Surely too ambitious to go for a goal from here as he passes it to Danny Hollins. Hollins out wide into Christian Campbell as Christian Campbell switches it into... Tarbuck arrives. He originally goes for that shot, but it's been blocked by Audi Lucy, the captain. And now Danny Hollins trying to head it, header it back into the danger zone. By falls to Bradley Tarbuck, just outside of the box. Now Kavanagh, he plays one into Tarbuck. Tarbuck just out wide into Barca. Barca delivering the ball, finding the head of Stanley, who heads it back. And it did look as though it was just arriving to Jake Cope there. Did cause a bit of menace, that, well, header there. Nearly that's, finding Jake Cope, but it's good defending from Williams. That's the first time I've seen Hayes panic, and uh, that's a good sign for Gosport. They need to exploit that. Well, it's been a change of corner taker. This time it's going to be Jake Cope taking the corner. Lifts one into Alfie Stanley at the back post, but unfortunately the short striker, the, unfortunately Height's not one of his well, attributes, is it? And he just can get on the end of it. And instead, oh, Wabo dances past Kavanaugh and Rory Williams. Wabo through on goal, skips past Toby Stewart, and somehow he can't finish it. Jesus. His post just skims wide of the right post, and I'm not sure how Wabo didn't finish that. He got past Toby Stewart, he got past Rory Williams, he got past Harry Kavanaugh. It was lovely movement from the forward. He's smiling, but I don't know how he didn't find the back of the net there, Jeremy. I've got to ask, what on earth did those two think they were playing at? That was such a simple thing to do. Shut him down. He finds a way through, gets a run in on goal, and here's the post. It's the, that is the biggest of let-offs that Gosport will have all season. Uh, well, it's yeah. nuts. But it was the substitute there causing the damage. We've already had an early taste. And if they would have got free there, that would have just killed off the been, game. That would have been the game over. But, I mean, it's not often I actually criticise, oh. but that was so, so poor at the back of the Gosport Borough. Now, you're tweeting, so I'll talk them through. Gosport now trying to use that good fortune oh, to their advantage. Yeah, now, then. what has the referee given here? He's given a free kick to Hayes and the United. Didn't quite catch the incident in full to, to sort of describe what happened, but... What that does allow is Hayes just to have a bit of a breather now. They're 2-1 up, 10 minutes to play. And Gosport will have to chase this game until the end. They will have to. They have no choice. And they must not do what they've just done again. Because <laughs> the next time, Hayes will not miss. But there we are. Now, the ball's gone from one end of the pitch to another. And somehow, Gosport, again, shoddy defending, have conceded a corner. And it will be from the right-hand side. But... This is the problem. I kind of feared this today. Playoffs achieved, complacency mm. creeps in. Well, 
Honestly, I'm just shocked it's not 3-1 currently. Luckily, it is still 2-1, I can confirm, here at the AI Stadium. But realistically, Wabo should have got that third. Danced past Harry Kavanagh and Rory Williams. He even skipped past Toby Stewart. And from that moment, I'm pretty sure he was going to get the goal. But regardless, like Jeremy said, Hayes and Yedin, they have got a corner. It's going to be Brown taking it. And maybe this is where Hayes and Yedin can find their goal. They have already scored once from the corner. And it was number 14 there who headed just high. I think the final... Yeah, I don't know. So it's going to be another corner. And this time it's going to be, yeah, once again, Brown taking it. Let's see what Hayes and Yedin can do from this corner. As it's hit towards the back post. Oh, Finding no! number 15. He hits the crossbar, and then it's Moore Cecil who follows the shot up, blazing one over the bar, and Gospot, they're really starting to ride their luck here, Jeremy. They are living so dangerously, it's not true. This, how they are not 3 or 4 1 down now. If this isn't going to wake them up, then nothing will at all. You know, we've got eight to go. Minutes, literally. So, Alfie Stanley coming down this right hand channel. Gospot really need to find that goal. Oh, here we are. And maybe they can, with Bradley Tarbuck running onto a Harry Kavanagh ball. Bradley Tarbuck, as a result, does bring down Williams inside the Hayes and Yedin box. As a result, the referee does immediately blow up and Hayes and Yedin, they get a foul. And it does look as though this game, I can only see it, well, the wind fall into Hayes and Yedin. Gosport, they just haven't looked on it today. Well, Other than getting that goal, since the goal, even Hayes and Yedin, they've looked the stronger side. Well, they have. And... Uh... And fair play to them. But Gosport have got time to get an equaliser. And as the situation stands, that will do. If they can get a point out of this and the, and the other two teams lose, then they've actually done well. But it could be so much better. But this performance has been not great for Gosport today. Is it hopeful to ask for three points from this position? We have seen it a couple of times this season. It's all strange. We know that. It can, but again, yeah, now, the other problem that I see... Is it indiscipline is creeping mm. into Gosport's game? Frustration. Frustration and indiscipline, and that's not going to help them out. Well, as a result, it was Stanley there just, well, brushing against Williams, the substitute, shoving him to the floor, and Adai, he's going to be the man taking this free kick, telling all the Hayes and Yedin men to move forward. But why do Hayes and Yedin need to go for that third goal? They could just happily sit and defend. But no, we have seen multiple chances where they have been 2-1 up and they have looked for that third. The best coming from Wabo as he did skip past Williams and Kavanagh, even getting past Toby Stewart, just not finding the back of the net. And that has been the closest shot that has been within the last 10 minutes. But now it's Christian Campbell coming down this left-hand channel, passing it into Jake Cope. Jake Cope now arriving. He's got options arriving in the middle as well. Pat and Joe calling for options to arrive in the middle as Jake Cope, he was isolated in that left-hand channel. Now Barca in the central circle coming forward, trying to just get past Kavanaugh. Passing it into Tarbuck just by the right corner flag. Tarbuck has to lay one off to Barca. And Barca nearly losing the ball, but does well to nearly get it into Tarbuck. Barca, he does go for, to the floor. He was pushed to the floor by Azil there. And as a result, Gosport have been given a free kick just by the right corner flag, 15 yards away from goal. Hopefully, Gosport might be able to find something from this corner. Set pieces haven't been anything good from Gosport this half. They've conceded from one set piece. And from the other six they've had, well, attacking-wise, they haven't done anything with them. But can they do anything with this late one? Still, Gosport one, Hayes and Yedin two. Kavanaugh with a lifted free oh. kick. It's been punched away once again by AD, the man of the match performance. And maybe Hayes and Yedin, might, they might be looking for that third and final goal. It's Brown coming down the right-hand channel, but he's been dispossessed by Jake Cope. Copey passes it into Dutchie Hollins in the centre of the park. Hollins exchanges it into Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh's ordering Tarbuck to go in front of him as he's got no yellow bodies arriving in front of him. Instead, he has to pass it into Danny Hollins in the centre of the box. Now, Alfie Stanley just outside of the box, the Hayes and Yedlin's box, that is. Bradley Tarbuck out wide into Kavanaugh. Gosport just trying to work their way around the Hayes and Yedin defence. It doesn't look as though plan A is currently going ahead. Maybe they're going to have to look for that plan B. Maybe mix things up. As currently, it's not working for Gosport. Four left to play here at the AI Stadium. Barca coming forward. He passes it out wide into Christian Campbell. Campbell's teeing up across. Might find Dan Wooden, but instead Stanley takes hold of it. 
Stanley probably just a bit selfish there, not to let Dan Wooden get on the end of it. Try to go for the ambitious, get that first touch, but it was a heavy touch from the young forward. But nonetheless, Gosport still coming forward down this left-hand channel. Jake Cope laying a ball yeah, off to Captain Roy Williams. Yeah, Williams lifting the ball into Stanley. Stanley heads one forward and it goes out for a goal kick. The header just too high and it was a slow ball. It looked as though Rafa might have been able to get on the end of it. But once again, good defending from the other Williams from the Hayes and the Eden team. Well, that hung in the air, didn't it? There, it did. Stanley, but uh, that's better from Gosport. That's what they've got to be doing. That's what they've got to be doing. Well, unfortunately, it's just minutes left on the clock. And luckily, all the games, they are still in our favour. And the draw, if we can find that late goal, it, it will be, be monumental thing. for Gosport. Well, it would be better than what we're guessing. Exactly. And, yeah. And a ball and just the ball smacks us just in the press us, box. Yeah. But they've yeah. multiple. It's uh, already started, hasn't it? Well, yeah. Luckily, all the results, they are going our way. As AFC Totten, they are losing. And so are Salisbury, which is probably a big shock as they are losing 2-0 to Harrow Borough. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, I just have to refresh that. But, yeah, so currently all the results, they are going our way. The only game that has changed is Hendon Murphy and Hendon have pulled a goal back. So, Murphy, they are currently They're looking for the playoffs. The playoffs aren't they? But... And yeah, that Hendon goal. I think it would be a massive blessing if we did end up losing this, if the other two, because it means we've lost no ground. Well, it's Jake Cope. you were. Yeah. Copey striding down this left-hand channel, lifts in a ball, trying to find Rafa Ramos, but it's being flicked away by Williams. Barca passing it into Hollins. Hollins passes it into Kavanaugh as the Pompey veteran E falls over. Now Stanley arriving just outside of the box as he receives the ball. Passes it into Taba. Taba delivers the ball and it falls to Alfie Stanley. Stanley volleys a half volley, but nowhere near enough power to cause a die any problems. And it goes straight down the throat of a die there. Yeah, Gosport are huffing and puffing, but they can't blow the house down at the moment. And uh, we're into the last 90 seconds of normal time. So we'll see how much time is added on very shortly indeed. Adai hacks one forward, but it falls to the head of Alex Barsas. He heads one forward. Now Danny Hollins heading the ball forward, nearly finding the run of Dan Wooden. But instead, Moore Cecil wins the pace battle. But still, Gosport coming forward. And Barsa. He just tried to lift the ball into Jake Cope, just towards the left side of him. But too much power on the pass sees it goes out for a Hayes and Yedin throw in. And there's no urgency for Hayes and Yedin to take uh, this throw in any much, quick. The referee wants them to get on with it, but uh, hopefully he'll add it all on. Because, mm. yeah, it's, just, it's the age-old tactic of trying to slow the game down. But before they changed the rules for the stoppage time, the referees weren't going to add that on. But now they're adding everything. Yeah, but well, it's better. It's much better and fairer. Just means the game's gone for a lot longer. I mean, it, it was uh, Glenn Turnbull of Moneyfields that said in the press a little while ago that you're now preparing your team to play 100 minutes rather mm. than 90. Well, it's good for us as press people. Yeah. But well, anyway. Some could argue they're not actually playing. Yeah. Because yeah, the stop is time. Yeah, is there's, the there's an argument for it. But... Well, let's see what the board comes up with. Yeah. Well, it's... Their captain, Odi Lusu, going for an audacious shot, taking a volley from 30 yards out from goal, narrowly missing. And we can confirm, wow, seven minutes added on. And now Gospel is starting to come forward. Stanley passes one into Bradley Tarbuck. Seven minutes might have just given the Gospel fans a bit of incentive here, along with the players. Maybe just given the Gospel players a bit of belief now going into the final seven minutes as Barca he's coming forward Barca plays one off into Dan Wooden but he's been, been dispossessed now Wabo he was coming forward but it's a sliding challenge from Rory Williams as he dispossesses Wabo now Gosport coming forward thanks to Jake Cope leading the line Cope he's trying to lift one forward into Christine Campbell Campbell floating the ball nearly finding Dan Wooden but it's been headed wide Gosport still on the attack thanks to the ball being kept in there. Harry Kavanagh coming down this right-hand channel. He's got Bradley Tarbuck arriving behind him. But Kavanagh chooses to pass it into Cope just outside of the box. Now Danny Hollins passes that out wide into Christian Campbell. Campbell looks as though he's going to be the man putting in the cross. He's crosses deflected out for a corner ball. And it will be a late Gosport corner in the 91st minute. Yeah, um, Williams is struggling. So both physios want to get on. Um, the referee hasn't seen it, though. He has now. 
Oh, no. Yeah, he said play on. Oh. No, he hasn't. He said. The referee blows up for the two injuries in the centre of the but park. In fairness, though, Rory's struggling as well. Yeah. He's, he needs to be seen. So, I don't know why the gospel fans are getting agitated when their own players in trouble. Well, Wabo is the Hayes Nidham man currently down. And it gives me time to run you through some of the other results in the Southern Premier League while the play is currently ongoing. So, Walton and Hersham, they do lead 1-0 to Sholin. Tiverton Town, they lead 2-0 to Chesham United, which can be considered a bit of a shock, considering Chesham's fine form in the league and obviously being league champions. Harrow Borough, they are another shock team, leading 2-0 to Salisbury. Paul Town, they're leading 3-0 to Be Beaconsfield. Oh, so there will, yeah, there will be another change. I didn't think they'd made all three, you know. Is that Wabo coming off? Mm, I think they're waiting to see. Yeah, Wabo. So it's a substitute Wabo coming off, it's and it's going to be there. number six coming, six on. coming on. So Wiltshire. No, they're taking off the 11. No, they're taking off 11. So they're not taking off the injured Wabo. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayes and Yeni making a substitution. Coming on number six, that's Jerry Wiltshire. 11 off, yeah? yeah, yeah, replacing number 11, Max Hudson. Max Hudson is been in fine form today. The only thing is, I'm surprised it's not number 20 Gabo coming off in replacement. <laughs> there he is, Hudson, the man being taken off, and it is number six Wiltshire arriving in his replacement, just arriving in time for this Gosport corner. I hope the referees clocked on all those extra minutes. Yeah, well, Pompey are in stoppage time at Bolton. It's still one all, so it does look like yeah. campaigns on us. Christine Campbell. A ball floated in towards oh. Alex Barca. And Alex Barca on the edge of the box. Well, just throws his well, boot behind the ball. Lifting one over the bus. I don't even know how to describe that shot, if I'm being honest, in the nicest well, way possible. Basically, he got his foot right underneath it on the turn. He was trying to volley, but he literally got his foot as right underneath as it could be, and it went vertically straight but, up yeah. the ground. So, um, <laughs> but, we have, but we have four minutes of stoppage time, about three and a half to go. So, Gosport could still do it. Um, we'll see, can they? Um, if they don't, then they have to hope the other two games stay as they are. Well, ball has worked its way back into Toby Stewart, and Toby Stewart immediately thrown one forward into Christian Campbell, the man who had just previously taken their corner. He's been one of our star men since joining, since, well, he has signed. Can he be the man to work Gosport's goal as he is still coming forward, playing a free ball into Jake Cope by just too much power on the passes that go out for a goal kick? Well, I think the passing from this game involving Gosport is definitely something to take forward going into the well, next couple of games. Something to, we need to heavily work on. They need to learn from this. The passing's been poor. The decision-making has been poor. Um, but there you go. I'm not going to sit here and run them down. I'm just playing my role as your co-commentator. It's not been great. They'll be disappointed with it. Um, and so noted by Pat and Joe, they've got a week now to sort of take stock. And then it's ending away next Saturday in the final scheduled away game of the season. Still, Gosport 1, Hayes Nieden 2. As the ball has worked its way onto Bradley Tarbuck, as the referee does blow up for a Gosport foul, with Alex Barca being smacked in the face by what looked like Wabo there. Now Christine Campbell coming forward, just escaping past the central circle. Christine Campbell still arriving forward, but passes it into Rory Williams. Williams still in the central circle, floats one forward into the midfielder but a heavy one at the same time as Brown floats one outside of the stands and it will be a Gosport thrown on the far side near that Harry Mitson stand 20 yards away from goal it's going to be a quick throw and taken into Christian Campbell Campbell into Hollins now into Jake Cope in acres of space just by the left corner flag does have to pass one back into Christian Campbell now Christian Campbell might be looking to put that final ball into the box but instead has to pass it into Alex Barca around 30 yards away from goal and once again, they give it away too easily, Gosport. As it was Oddi Lucy trying to clear one off the lines, trying to smash one forward, but it wasn't a good clearance as it works its way onto Christine Campbell. Minutes left to play, still Hazen Yedden two, Gosport one. Gosport looking for that final goal just to try and maybe rescue one late point. A point which could be monumental in our race for that second place spot. Yeah, even if they just equalise at this point, that's going to be huge. And Pompey are in seventh minute stoppage time and they're still one all elsewhere. So, well, yeah, that's a big other game involving the Hampshire area. But let's just hope Gosport, they might be able to get a late goal. Even Pompey, which hopeful they might get a late goal as well. 
Oh, eight minutes at Bolton. Well, it's Christine Campbell with a floated ball and trying to find Dan Wooden, but it's been hacked away by Wabo. A ball has been put back into the danger zone. Alfie Stanley trying to chip one forward, but it finds no gospel bodies. And another ball has been booted away, this time by the substitute, Wilshire. Full time. I'm just so full time. The, yeah. Ball, so the champagne's on ice. Well, done. no. They haven't done it. Well, I feel sorry for the Pumpy fans that paid over £800 for those tickets. Well, Wasted. I did say I thought there was a lot of complacency amongst the fan base, and, and we'll that just forward, proves just it. Bloody forward. Well, yeah, Kavanaugh well. striding forward, just arriving outside yeah. of the Hayes box, delivers the ball, and why not just take a shot from there rather than going for a cross? That's the only plea I have. Now a ball being hacked away back into the Gosport half. Falls to the Gosport skipper, Rory Williams. Hayes and Yedin fans around the stadium blown for that full-time whistle with their hands. But the referee is still down up to him. As Tarbuck offloads the ball into Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh just outside of the Hayes and Yedin box. Kavanaugh floats in a ball which might find Jake Cope. But it's not a great ball and it works its way on Tech Peter who launches one forward. Toby Stewart happens to come far out of his box to maybe just keep it in play. He passes one into Christine Campbell, and I would imagine this is going to be Gosport's last way of getting a chance. It's his last chance to lose, yeah. But it's Christine Campbell coming forward, and rather than putting, them putting the ball in the cross, he passes a low-driven pass into Alex Barca. Now back out wide into Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh, he passes a low pass into Alex Barca. Barca trying to chip one forward into Christine Campbell, but it's been dispossessed once a time, but Barca... The, he redempts himself as well. Now Christine Campbell's time to put a low-driven pass in. But Campbell finds Brown. And Brown puts one out for a throw-in. And it is full-time here at the AEI Stadium. Hayes and Yedden 2. Gosport 1. So it's a disappointing here from at the AEI Stadium from Gosport. We did look as though we might have been able to get back into the game. It was Dan Wooden getting the goal. But yeah, unfortunately, Gosport can't rescue that one point. And it's Hayes and Yedin who do take home the three points. And at the same time, I will run you through some of the other results in the Southern Premier League. But yes, yeah, disappointment for Gosport. And some of the results in the Southern Premier League, Swindon Supermarine, three. Basingstoke, nil. Bracknell, three. Winchester, one. Digcourt, three. Plymouth, two. Dorchester, two. Hanwell, one. Like I said, Gosport won, Hayes and Yedden too. So disappointment for Gosport. Hungerford won, AFC Totten nil. So Hungerford doing us massive favours. Murphy won, Hendon won. Paul Town three, Beaconsfield nil. Salisbury nil, Harrow two. Tiverton two, Chesham nil. And Walton and Hersham won, Shola nil. So Jeremy, the results, they did favour us. But Gosport, they just, yeah, they are full-time results now. But our result, it didn't favour us whatsoever. So it's other teams doing us favours when we're not helping ourselves out. Yeah, it's disappointing because the performance today from Gosport was poor. Mm. And Hayes and Yedding deserve that win. They deserve it richly and in their fight to stay up. And it's just the luckiest thing ever, really, that both Salisbury and Tottenham lost. But you could then say that was a really big missed opportunity to put three points between us and them. Well, exactly that, to be fair. And, well, win today, it would have been monumental in our race for that second-place sport. And with that loss today, could it affect us going forward with the mentality? You've just got to write it off. It's a bad day at the office, and you just need to write it off and move on. Uh, they've got a week now. They've got injuries to assess. They'll learn the lessons from this. Hendon away next Saturday. Um, and they need to try and get a result up there and then finish off against Chesham. Well... Unfortunately, it has finished here at the AI Stadium. Hayes and Yedden 2, Gosport 1. And final words from us, up the borough.